the late game, it's easy to see. It, it'll be on to the side of Omega if mm-hmm. it's late game. Yeah. For But sure. for mid game and early game, that depends honestly. <laughs> um, both sides has good capacity in terms of dishing out uh, good damage, mm-hmm. in terms of pulling up skirmishes, swinging even back and forth. But in terms of AOE control, it falls in favor of of uh, for the side of uh, Omega just because they have time lapse, they have misfortune. But still, I think early game and mid game is 50-50. Late game is on Omega. All right. With that said and that, de- with that said and done. Oh my goodness. As the protections are now coming through from Kishinbu, mm-hmm. it's now going to be the early wards coming in for the riverside into the bottom side of the map as the three man roam is going to be seen by NXP from the side of Omega Esports and clearing out that deep ward for NXP. A very smart move coming in for the side of Omega Esports at this one. And now as you have predicted, it's going to be the Fiora and Zed matchup. Into the main lane. Mm, yep, man. Um, so let's see. Um, let's look into the support. Honestly, um, right now it's very standard for these two supports. Yeah. But interesting. Honestly, this is the first time that I saw the support staying in their own respective dragon lanes. Probably mm-hmm. because there's just a lot of harassment that is available on any of the two, or mm-hmm. maybe because they want to surprise yeah. this Lulu. Uh, around Mystic, well, level one on disaster. And uh, remember that impressive is also close. If this are this has to engage on to stronger, it won't spell well for NXP. Mm-hmm, definitely. Right now, Olaf against a Camille. I do think Camille is gonna have a good time. Maybe I just that's my prediction. Into the Baron lane against Olaf in terms of the very very early game. But nevertheless, Shinbu, you know what? Chili, I think needs to just stay put because impressive is looking for a kill. Yep, moving okay. actually closer okay. into the Dragon Pit. The priority is to go for the Scuttler. Same mm-hmm. with NXP's Joshi. Very standard on the start. Yeah. Um, I I think Joshi might be in the position to invade the blue buff. He got a faster rotation compared to Impressive. Impressive is eyeing actually to go for the gang onto the top lane side. But I think they did sense here, and I think he already knows that this uh bottom lane. Yes, this blue buff is lost, especially when Arise and left his own lane. Arise, I JLC will report. That the buy is on the blue buff. Now will there be turret dives or rotations to go for early turrets? No, it's not. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mega Esports is just pressuring into the backside of of that uh, matchup into the Baron lane, which I think is quite impressive. But nevertheless, there are four men roaming into the Baron lane. It's gonna be very impressive right now as the Sonic Wave is gonna come next onto the Alistar. Yeah, okay. Uh, of course, they will go for the safeguard here to fall back. Impressive is exhausted. Here comes Chule. Level 5 is available. Death Mark upon connection. Of course, it got reposed also by Arise. So the Death Mark is burned. And again, that's what we said about the Fiora against the Zed. Mm-hmm. Massive, massive play. But no First Bloods are gonna connect from any of these teams right now. And Lee Sin, I do think, is mm-hmm. not in a very, very good shape because he lost the blue buff. He lost a lot of jungle in the process of going in for guns. But nevertheless, truly, stay safe, boy, because Lee Sin is just here around the corner. The thing here is, even if you lost the buff, you might still be in the position. If, if your mm-hmm. allies is able to uh, follow up, it would be nice for them. Does he have his safeguard? Ooh. He did use the safeguard right after the, vault, uh, the assault and battery, but... Joshi here is the one way in too deep. I think he will commit. He will complete the kill. That's the first blood against Impressive. Impressive dive in way too deep. Yeah, you know what, NXP, I, I like how they, you know, chilled up a bit. They didn't last it. And Jin, they waited it for the curtain call to connect because that is big money for the ADC. But nevertheless, we're going to have another fight into the Baron lane. Yep. Realizing that Talizin is actually mm-hmm. gone. Disaster here zones out stronger and also time lapse. This is high level wild drip indeed. As you can see, how they can capitalize on that zone or on that death by the jungler upon that dive attempting to get the kill on the Zed. Of course, it will be mirrored for by Arise and JLC. Uh huh. Tower first blood going to the side of NXP. First blood is going to the side of NXP as well. And now, 500 gold deficit for the side of Omega Esports at this early into the match. Performance are now in the game. It is now the time in this matchup as now the Cloud Drake is now being initiated by NXP with the late reset from Omega Esports delaying their contest in this fight. They're not gonna contest it. They're not gonna fight it. It's now it's gonna be the free dragon coming to the side of NXP. Let's see here, Chuli. 
Moving Oof. towards uh, impressive death mark. I think yeah, safeguard not available. It's gonna be an easy kill against the mm -hmm. Lee Sin. Full combo also for Chuli. He did hide his own shadow to make sure that uh, impressive cannot uh, dodge out Shadden? any play or shuriken from the Z. This is a 4v5. Uh, 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 another 4v4. 4v5 across the map. But here in the bottom lane, only 4 members available for NXP. Disaster is zoning out uh, Omega here. And NXP has the early game now. NXP has the early game now. And the, the heavy part here is that next to the Cloud Drake will be an uh, Infernal Drake. But of course, we have to hold our horses on that part because we are now 55 seconds before the first head, before the Herald. 100%. Though, take note, Humus Ghost played first item of Uzi in this fight. That's penetration, that's massive damage as Camille has been slain once more. It's gonna be 1 for 0. Mega Esports is slowly diminishing their advantage in this fight as we have another fight into the Dragon Lane. Ooh. 21.6, on yeah, the gold the mark here. Now let's look at Shuli. He's playing around with a rice. A rice did flash out. Shuli misses his shuriken. <laughs> yeah, it's just a short range, you know. Easily yeah. can be left, right, micro, macro play from the side of Mega Esports. But, you know, Camille tried to go for a cancel recall, but Zed was just too fast, too quick of a ninja. To just go for the early recall instead, but bye is going for an ultimate. Ah, uh, too high. That baits. That baits gets me. Mm -hmm. It's now gonna be the Rift Herald being initiated by NXP. Now Lee Sin went in for the Sonic Wave after getting that information. Now it's gonna be the Make It Rains getting that information as well. But the time is not gonna it's connect not to that Rift Herald. It's now gonna be the Death Mark connecting to the enemy team as Camille follows through into this fight. Lulu is so out of way in this fight as well. And now it's gonna be the 4v3 situation as all of us have been killed by Omega Esports. It's now gonna oh. be by getting oh. that double kill with <laughs> that Camille. It's not crippled kill. Zed goes down. It's Jin, the only one remaining. From the side oh. of NXP, it might be potential oh, going in for the wipeout. It might be the ace, but now it's gonna be Uzi went in for the flash back to safety. And now Omega Esports is back into the game. The the team fight was won by NXP for a part right there. Truly uh -huh. got that he was able to escape. But the crazy part here is of how GLC knows the range of his own champion. He got his hook shot in, and for the backline, was able to get the kick. Four on, on that Camille towards the Z, and that's what turned things around. There's a quick snowball here for JLC. <clears throat> the tactical sweep plays plays out well for him. And I also want to mention that uh I think disaster overextend for a bit. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean they they've already gotten the Rift Herald. Yeah. They could have just went home. They've already had a what four kill lead earlier? But they just gave Omega Esports the right opportunity to make a comeback play. And Jin was too far too far back. We're in the rest of the team were actually fighting against Omega Esports in in uh the hillside. So overall, a member at disadvantage. They were too aggressive. They really want to get more kills. They were too greedy in that fight, which enables Omega Esports to make a play and get four kills in the process. Very nice uh process, honestly. Uh very nice result actually for OMG side. Uh, on that Dragon Pit. But again, also a very, very nice rotation from NXP on clearly trading it quick for the bottom lane and uh, forcing a back against Arise. It didn't translate into a kill against Arise, but it quickly re-established NXP's yeah. control on the bottom lane on the Dragon Pit. But of course, Omega also was quick to retaliate by putting on their two wards on the pixel and also the mid lane side brush and even the position here. But the problem mm -hmm. is I don't think any team has the freedom has the capacity on going first for the Infernal. They need to scar around for a bit. Absolutely, you all have the items. You're even in terms of gold. Only 2k gold difference going to the side of XP. It's gonna be very hard, but now it's gonna be the sweeping wards connecting to the river side as Rift Herald is gonna be spawned into the mid lane. It's gonna be very hard for Omega Esports as NXP has now initiated Dragon. OMG is late. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. NXP. Very wise in utilizing that um, Herod, trading it very, very quick for an Infernal Drake. And of course, OMG tried reacting, and it will cost them so many. They won't be able to go for the push curtain call. Puts time lapse in an awkward position, but also with the dead mark here, then at the back, he just baits out. And time lapse predicted it. Bullet time, of course, makes it awkward for the members of NXP to follow up with a with Chule. And I think that's it. One for none. But still, no turrets are gone on the mid lane side here against NXP. OMG, they will go for the bottom lane. 
Yeah, the bullet time I think connected to each and every single enemy team of NXP. Like it connected a very very good cone in that fight, and NXP wasn't really able to just slide in back lanes left and right in that fight because of the pressure that Mega Esports is doing against that fight. So overall, kudos to Mega Esports for a job well done in that engagement. Good man. Um, it's still even though. Still yeah. very, very even, very and uh, I really think NXP is can still be at the helm of this game. It's just that early game, like I said, it goes 50 50. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I think it, it, it makes a lot of sense that NXP can capitalize on that. They had the Vi, they had the Alistar, really. But again, late game, I can I, I can confident, confidently uh, bet it will be on Omega because time lapse were there are very little options to target on the time lapse. And like I said, I was say uh, I mentioned it six minute, nine minute mark for the four one config. But we are now onto the ten minute mark, entering the eleven. This is where the four zero one config will start. They will have a rise, uh, continue the split push on the side links. The question here is how capable are Isis in escaping the hard engages, whether from a buy or whether from a Z. Mm -hmm. And speaking of escaping, there is two for the side of Omega Esports into the mid lane. Similarly, Alistar and Olaf is also there. But Free Man Rome coming in from Omega Esports going into the bottom side. Gets one kill. The damage is too much, honestly, for Arise to survive on that part. And Stronger is also not enough. It's a total disaster here for OMG. And nice follow up also here by NXP onto the upper part of this map. It will be Arisen delivering the blow onto the backup of Arise. So what happens is the OMG trades it with a mid lane outer turret. So NXP will try to get maybe one kill here. But of course, the real target would be of the Baron. Yeah, that will indeed gonna be a. Easy, Baron, an easy what? objective. Why are you doing that? Oh my god, that's uh... it. That might be the game, ladies and gentlemen. Very big lead. Even if uh, with the attack of the Baron, it would be difficult. But of course, JLC, I rather Arise was able to get a kill towards Chule. Only time lapse remains. But here comes Impressive. Maybe the engage of JLC is not so bad. It will clearly stop NXP on taking on this Baron. Though that takes three kills in favor of NXP, you know, considering that you are an even level playing field, NXP went in for the Baron, three kills for them, and now we're seeing a 2k goldie for their team. And even the Infernal Drake, Cloud Drake is in their favor as well. So when you're talking about mid game, late game, Infernal Drake is going to be big time in terms of scaling the damage output of NXP. And you have Jin as well. So that burst damage is going to be very important. Now it's going to be another fight into the Baron's pit. Yep. Moving slow and steady here. 11 7. Ladies and gentlemen, NXP still has the lead, like we said. And again, uh, the question when he asked uh, Arise, can he make the split? Is he capable of actually escaping the damage that can come from the Zen and also the Vi? The answer is no. <laughs> Mm -hmm. The damage is overwhelming for Arise, even if they did try baiting with impressive backing on towards uh, Arise, it's a big problem. But yeah. if there's one ray of hope for OMG here, it goes without saying that is JLC. They're taking the Baron, just beating it with a few hits. There's a ward and vision, and of mm -hmm. course, NXP closes in. Yeah, and you know what? Let's look at the items for now because I think it's going to be very interesting. We have a three man GA for the side of the XP Esports, right? And you have the Black Cleaver from the Zed, Black Cleaver from the Olaf, typical type of builds. But what is key here is the three GAs, right? That forces out NXP to be able to go for those aggressive plays, to go for those back lanes without anything in, you know, afraid of. They don't have any fear because they can just jump in with their GA on. And do you have your teammates? With Jin into the backside of the map, just going in for that little bit of a trade-off into the backside. So, very, very smart move coming in for the NXP. But also, this is going to be deficit for NXP as well. Because if you're talking about damage output, look at Omega Esports. Trinity Force, BRK, Mortal Reminder, and even GA coming through for Misfortune as well. Which is kind of a bit late item right now for the ADC of Omega Esports. So, damage-wise, it is going to be very interesting as the Yumu's are also a lot for the side of NXP. So I think Yumus right now is just big because you have the mobility, you have the penetration, and you have the burst damage. And considering you have Yora and the Camille, and even the Lee Sin for the side of Meg Esports, I think this is going to be a very good item. Indeed, man. Um, at this point in the game, I think the heavy count would be on the Guardian Angels. 
Yeah. Uh, especially on the items, right? Especially whose Guardian Angel is up. And it's very dangerous. That is very dangerous for JLC. You no know, Guardian Angel on that part. He has his stasis on. But that's clearly a numbers advantage now available for the oh. members here of NXP. This might be the game. If they get the deletion oh. here, execute damage done from the Zed. Finishes off and allows for Uzi to get the snipe out against the mem members of OMG. You can see how impressive plays this two. Only one member is gone for the side of NXP. And they're on the hunt towards impressive. This delay is good towards impressive. He went for the Sonic Wave, pops the GA. Still has his uh, safeguard, but that's it. He will be wait out. He did dodge shot the Vault Breaker. He tries to retaliate. Baroness is here for the side of NXP. A very big spike on the gold in the graph of NXP. Perfect curtain call from that Jin. Perfect initiation from that Alistar enables them to go for that four-man kill. But we have Fiora going to contest this one. The question is, what? he can he? Uh, I think again, I think it's okay to contest. He did get Ooh. one kill against the Jin. They tried yeah. to finish it, but JLC can chase. JLC can chase, or will he commit? No ult onto Jushi, no mana onto Jushi. He's trying to cut a Ryzen. Where is the angle? It's a bit off. He chose the wrong angle, and I think that's it. Members here of Team NXP can escape. <sighs> good trades, good trades, man. NXP got a lot of kills, four man kills specifically into the top lane. Fiora delayed that fight and able Omega Esports to just go for the reset. Undermines the reset in this fight, in this map. But you can't disregard the 5k gold read right now going into the side of next play Esports. On top of all that, you also had three dragon buffs available for them as well. And yes, they are at the turret disadvantage, but the Baron buff is in their favor as well. So expecting a lot of lane pressure right now as NXP has the potential to go for a 1-3-1 one, one, to pressure in all lanes. Indeed, ladies and gentlemen, 5k on the gold lead. And uh, right now, Team Omega has no choice but to group up. The plan of actually foiling a 4-0-1. Is not anymore enabled for the side here of Omega. They need to get one team fight still and get their scaling in because item advantage you have discussed infinity falls heavily in favor of NXP. It may seem that it's just 6k on the gold lead, but those are crucial items. Component items are still built for the side of Omega. Mm -hmm. And look at that 1 2 2 is going to be um, the composition here for next wave. East versus roaming around, going in for the Baron buff onto the wave minions and clearing out waves. It's going to be the turret 2 turret taking down oh. the next wave. East versus into the Baron lane. Ah, you look at top lane. This is very dangerous for Chuli. He did swap up that suicide, but of course, a Drake should be easy here for the side of Omega. Can stronger arrive? They can take this fight maybe 4v5. Okay. It's a little bit delayed. Disaster is arriving. He wants to land in for the combo. They're over chasing here. They went for time lapse. Arise is there. This might be a game to take for the members here of Team Omega. But AJLC, he needs to get this teleport up. He's recalling this 4v4. And members here of Omega is getting deleted. JLC, I think he's late for the party. Oh my god. Uh, he's recalling, he's recalling the top lane said he, he got no health most likely. But still. You know what? That that's... that that bait from Zed was big yeah, ring. That was big. That that actually encashed them big JLC hook shot and flash. What's happening? Dragon boss. Look at that. Yeah. Four Dragon Boss. Ladies and gents. That's hey, not JLC... something. He can't JLC burned his hook shot. He also burned his own flash against the low health members here of uh -huh. NXP. What and is think... happening on JLC? Mm -hmm. Zed with that bait forced out a lot of skills for Omega Esports. And considering that Dragon was on the bottom side of the map and they were all at the top side, they were really just too late to contest that one. And considering that that is the uh, Elder Dragon that gives you extra burn damage in a fight. So NXP with the advantage around 20 or 10k gold lead with the bird damage, with the infernal drake, with the omnivamp. It's just gonna slice and dice the enemy team. Alright, bot breaker inside. Remember that there's there's one inhibitor already gone for the side here of Omega. Omega is now playing with their backs against the Wallace against NXP. And again, this is not anymore a story of a Baron dance. This is actually macro on the play. And of course, 4 0 1 will be pulled up once again by NXP. They pulled up the first trigger here. Omega, they're eyeing and actually reacting. But a problem is they have no idea of where the Zed might be. Zed showed himself down at the bot. And Omega will now decide to get closer and closer for a bit. 
that that face check from Lee Sin was scary. Yes. And I think he just did a great job. You know, Stasis and NXP just look back a bit. Because they needed a five man when it comes to those team fights, and Omega Esports was hovering into the top side. So a smart move from NXP, not giving any advantage right now for the side of Omega Esports. But listen, chill, chill. You need that ward, you need that vision, you need that information, but not like that. You don't dive into bushes without any information, and you don't face check in this state of a game. But nevertheless, it's gonna be the Baron still alive in this game. Twenty minutes into the matchup. Omega Esports, I'm excited to see how you're gonna do this and win the fight. Yep. Ooh. Okay, very deep vault breaker. Guardian Angel to the kick. You can see how far Jushi arrived too deep into the base here of Omega. Omega here though, they're actually flanking towards oh, Chule. Oh. Ladies oh. and gentlemen, there's the flash. Guardian Angel. Arise needs to get the burst down at Chule. Is there that mark? He did went for the parry just to remove the combo here. Ignite! Burn! Oh. It is still an outplay there by Chule against yeah. Arise. And now it's gonna be JLC down at the bottom lane. The Baron will be available for the side here of NXP. Chase done by Disaster. Oh, Delivering is stronger onto Joshi. And of course the chase continues. Volt Breaker into the vault here of Team Omega. The minion waves are coming in. They don't need to focus on the me. They're gonna be focusing down at the top lane in him. That's it. Two inims are gone. Badges are setting in. NXP P is closing the deal and sealing it against the team of OMG. There's the assault and battery. Ladies and gentlemen, focusing onto the Nexus, your champion at the Wild Dream Contender Series Asia will be Team Next Play Esports. Congratulations for a dominating fight. It's a 3 to 1. Omega Esports, thank you very much for participating in this tournament and thank you for giving us a hell of a game, a hell of a series. For this tournament and I think the early game was really just up for an XP esports I think I repeatedly say that early game would be the name of the game for game number four and next play uh -huh. esports just pushed it through early game they took a kill the tower first blood the first blood was in their favor they translated it to more objectives similar to the previous games that next play did for game number one and game number two and they've won it all and i think the synergy between the alistar and the Jin connected perfectly in that fight yes. which enabled yeah. them to produce massive kills massive setups against the mega esports and now with the cur curtain goal done and available it was basically a 5v3 5v2 5v4 types of situation where Omega Esports was not able to really just contest this because of the early lead of next play esports. I also think this is not a super one-sided. It is in a way one-sided, but not super one-sided <laughs> battle. Because if you look at the gold mm -hmm. on the graph, the highest peak gold was 12k. And all overall on the 15 minute mark of the game, on the yeah. 15 minute mark of the game Infinity, the gold leader of NXP didn't fall above 4,000. It was ranging around 3,500. Not to mention, there are times where it <clears> plateaued <throat> around mm -hmm. the 9 minute mark and even on the, obviously on the early parts of our game. And I cannot but feel that really the uh, NXP played according to their strengths here in a sense that, yo, Shinbo said that we are on the micro. We are on the micro side. So let's win it per micro. No, let's not allow um, Omega to actually get the macro play that they want. For example, the split push of uh, Arise. And let's capitalize on the fact that we are faster, we are sharper, we are snappier when it comes to the executions of this fight. Chule here played out of his mind yeah. with this said, right? <laughs> He keeps on baiting the enemy team, which I think is is really is really fun. Like he was going in for that one v two situations, he was really in an edge of that fight, but he he was able to capitalize in his mobility and got that trade off with a one for one. Yeah. With Omega Esports on the fringe edge in that fight, not really having that advantage in terms of gold, in terms of items, it was basically a sweep for an next play Esports. Indeed, man. And they have sealed it man they yeah. further cemented their position as the number one team for wild drift in the philippines and maybe asia or in maybe in the world we will know of course the only question here is this saga this long week saga or long month saga of next play and omega can be said to be concluded i'm not so sure i think they're gonna be fighting on another tournament this coming weekend but still it's mm -hmm. NXP who's at the top. So many champs, so many games, so many series Ooh. won by this, uh, this week by NXP.